Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Hi, I'm Hewell Hauser, and right now I'm standing in the middle of the street here at 4th and Hill in downtown Los Angeles. That's the California Plaza back there, those beautiful big modern glass buildings. But we are not here to do a story about the new buildings. We are here to do a story about this wonderful old building right here, the Subway Terminal Building, which has been a fixture here in downtown Los Angeles for over 50, 60, 70 years now. Actually, it's boarded up now, but we're going to be able to get inside. Here are our tour guides right here. Your name, sir? Irv Erlinson with General Services. Nice to meet you, sir. Bruce Frenzinger, historian. Nice to meet you. Hey, Jeffrey Weldon, City of L.A. And Bill Stauber, City of L.A. City of L.A., what does that mean? Well, we're affiliated. We're part of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Okay, good. We're going to find out what each of them has to offer this tour in just a moment. Bruce, we'll start with you. Fill us in a little bit, and Louie, we can get kind of a shot of it behind Bruce while he's talking to us. Tell us a little bit about the old, what is called the Subway Terminal Building. Okay, this originally was the site of the, going back to 1908, this was the site of a lean-to train station. It was over here where this parking lot was, and it was the terminus for the Los Angeles and Pacific Railroad, which operated lines all on the west side of Los Angeles. Well, by 1916, they redeveloped a little the train station here, servicing lines, but it became so congested, operating over 450 trains a day, that plans were set in motion to make a new train station on this side of town. So this building was built in 1925, not only to be an office building, but to be kind of a terminal building for the old electric cars. That's correct. And they, they actually dug a subway line into the, uh, this building, which is over a mile long. Now, see, you gave away our secret, because what we were going to say was, we're not here to do a story about the building. We're here to do a story about what's under the building, because most of us think that the, the metro, the red line, is the first subway that's being built here in L.A. today. Actually, we had a subway here in L.A. back in the 1920s. 20s. That's right. And it's still down there, and that's what we're going to go see. The traffic is let up, so we're going to jaywalk quickly across the street to the subway terminal building. We have gotten the manager of the building to uh, open it up for us, because nobody's in there these days. It's all boarded up. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Pretty good. Kuehl Hauser. Graziano. Nice to meet you, and you're going to kind of let us through the locked doors here. Sure. Here we go. Come on in, fellas. We're going to go in and see one of probably the least known facts about Los Angeles transportation history, our subway from the 1920s. This is an absolutely beautiful lobby here. Where are you going to take us first? How about the waiting room? The waiting room? The waiting room, yes. So this is where they would come to buy their tickets and wait for the train. Okay. And it's still here after all these years? Wow. Ah. So underneath there it is. That is this drop ceiling is the original waiting room. Now how do we know this was the waiting room by looking at the ceiling? because this is the style that was used of the buildings in that day, mm -hmm. of the 20s. And it was, of course, it was updated with the drop ceiling in later years. Mm -hmm. Well, now tell us what would have been going on in here. I think a lot of folks would just be congregating, uh, waiting for their scheduled train, probably carrying lots of bags and parcels, and uh, not unlike Union Station, I would think, today with the waiting area. Uh, Pretty much just a common area for people to wait and uh, before they went downstairs to meet their uh, scheduled train. Well, it's very ornate. Look up here, Louis, at the columns, the work that was done on it. It's amazing that this has survived over the years. Yeah, it really is, especially since at one time it's obviously been converted to a more modern setting. Now, see, I would never know where we were going or what we were heading toward if we didn't have a... Graciano here with us. Oh boy. 
Okay, here we go. Boy, this is a tight fit. Yeah. Through here. Now, what's down here? Uh, the maintenance shop for the trains, and uh, we're getting closer to the tunnel. To the actual tunnel itself. Watch your step up there. There's one missing. Now, it is dark down here. Now, this is all original stuff down here? It is original, yes. We have the uh, foreman's office. The foreman's office. Right here. Go on in and take a look, Louie. Wow, the name is still on the door. Yeah, original doors. Can we go inside? Sure. Come in. I have to expect him to still be in here. Oh, wow. Oh, look over here. This is the, what would this have been over here? This was more or less a baggage handling area and another ticketing window. Uh, now, I think it's where the trains can pick up their train orders. The train orders. Because each, each operator or conductor and motorman of each train had to pick up their orders for that particular train. So this is where the workmen themselves would come in. That's the, right. The this engineers, the trainmen. Trainmen, motormen and conductors. This is amazing that this is just like it was. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's kind of interesting, this wall here, and I, I may be mistaken, but I understood that that was for passing through larger parcels. They could actually open this wall up and pass larger items through the wall <laughs> to really? where it would be taken down to the trains and handled that way. Let's actually, open that up and take a look. Because also they operated uh, LCL passenger ser train, uh, freight service out of here, too. Oh, wow. And this is where they would keep, I'm going to turn on my lights so Louie can see back here. This is where they would keep the baggage. A lot of your larger items, uh, larger quantities of items, things would be taken through this room uh, and handled that way. Wow. Uh, you can see it's a rather large room and it passes off through this door into another large room as I recall. Well, this we, is where car assignments. This is what? See, you'd put your, at least this held cards, and the foreman would update the cards, turn it around so the trainmen could pick up their orders and with car assignments. And this is their cards. We're kept in this case. Um, sort of double duty, perhaps. Right. Well, let's go on. It's getting hot down here, too, isn't it? Yes. I guess yes. there's no air conditioning in this building anymore. No air conditioner, no air ventilation. Oh, boy. There's no original. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is the never-ending quest in search of the subway tunnel. Now, this has been blocked off down here. Yeah, they built this wall after they stopped the cars. Uh, I think it was oh. right. Look at the tunnel. This is it. Oh, boy. This is it, isn't it? It is. This is the tunnels where the train used to uh, arrive from Glendale or, you know. This is it. This, this is, is where it all happened. Now, what are we looking at here? We're on, we're on one of the platforms. Looking. This was the platform where people got on and off the That's train. That's correct. And it's all been filled in where the tracks were, where the camera is. And this dots on out the subway terminal. That's the subway right on out there. This is the tunnel. That's the tunnel. And the trains came in and out this way, and then this, this structure in the middle is the train, train master. Well, let's go take a look here. Sure. This, is, this is an amazing thing to see. Now, what would have been going on down here? He would actually, well, they, at the peak of the operation of this terminal, there was over 880 trains a day operated in and out of this particular switching. This was all track and switches that, in this area. And with that many trains coming in and out every day, it was a very busy and responsible job to see that all of the trains got to their correct tracks, because the two tracks came in were branched into five tracks at the platforms to load the passengers for the various destinations. Now look at this tunnel down here. I don't know 
How far does this thing go? This is, goes over a mile, or did. It's been filled in. So how many tracks would have been running through right here? Right here, there was two tracks, and they had safety blocks, uh, safety signals all the way out to the end of the tunnel. And of course, these lines ran to Glendale, Van Nuys, Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood Avenue line, and then they also had a line ran to Santa Monica and West Hollywood ran through here. Now, the pumps are operating down here, and this is where our friend from the Department of, Wa of uh, General Services comes in. Right. There's always been a groundwater problem here, so these pumps were put in, and even after the abandonment of the facility, the water still precludes, so we have to maintain the pumps to keep the water out of the tunnel area. Now, does the city have jurisdiction over all of this now? Just the tunnel itself. The tunnel belongs, or was deeded to the city. The other properties belong to, I believe it's the Subway Corporation or whoever. That yeah, is. The private corporation that owns the building. That's correct. Well, what's down here? We well, own it. We want to know. <laughs> Just the tunnel, as you're looking at right here now, all reinforced concrete tunnel, runs approximately a little over a mile out to the other end. About midway, it's penetrated, so it's sealed from either end. You have to either enter from the Glendale side or from this side to get to the center of it. Well, let's walk down just a little bit here and get a look. Boy, you can hear the water Always remember seeping down here. Very interesting. When you rode on the trains in this, you were going through this black tunnel, and you'd see these lights flashing by you as you went along. And of course, as a small child, I was horrendously fascinated by it. And they were inside these little alcoves were here. And these are for the trainmen if he wanted us, was servicing the tracks, wanted to step out of the way. A trainman would actually could step into one of these alcoves, and they had these lights here that illuminated this tunnel all a full distance. So these were made for the trainman to get into. Well, d duck out of the way and hold Safety. lights. Safety. Yeah, Safety, Safety devices. Alcoves. Right. It was an escape route in the event two cars would pass at the same time and they could get out of the way. Well, let's keep on going, because this is the stuff I wanted to see. This is... <laughs> This is neat down here. Of course, the reason it's so high is you had the, the trains ran with overhead trolley wires and they had to have room for the poles. So this was done with electricity. Yes. It, oh boy, electric. look what we're getting into here. This is, we are sinking, we are sinking deep in mud here. This is... <laughs> Now, are there any tracks or anything left at all? I don't believe anything's left here but some of the roadbed materials you see, the rocks and uh, what's left of, even the ties are gone, the rails are gone, uh, and basically we just have the rock material that was under the tracks. That's about all that's left. Wow. You really feel like, you really get a sense of history here, don't you? You really do. That's, that was the main thing that impressed me when Jeff and I came down here a couple years ago. As we were coming down through the different levels it seemed every level we went down we went back a little more in time and when we finally hit this portion of the subway you could almost feel the the wind of the trains riding by and the the buzz of the conversations going on it was it's it's an amazing piece of history yeah that's really why you and Jeff are here come over here Jeff and talk to us because the two of you all just kind of explored this on your own didn't you yeah we did uh, our company used to occupy a building next door to the subway terminal building and the reason we got interested in it to begin with was uh, through a retired employee who had told us uh, some stories about uh, what was down here and one of those stories had to do with some old automobiles that were kept down here. He accidentally discovered them when our company was uh, moving to new facilities. Uh, he went in the basement to make one last search and uh, found a door that led down into this area. And uh, he had a light with him and shi shined the light through the area and saw these automobiles parked down in this uh, So the room. city used to store impounded, probably, cars that's, down here after it went out of service as a railroad. That's correct. That's our understanding. Uh, and Bill and I, of course, became interested and had to find out about this. So uh, we came down on our lunch hour and did some uh, exploring. Was it legal for you all to be down here? Oh, sure. We had our trusty companion that we have today with us and he, he brought us down here and, and you remember at that time the tunnel did go all the way through to the Glendale uh, opening so they just drive the cars back in here and, and storm and so them. we were uh, half expecting to see a, a 30s Buick or something sitting down here in a great great gold mine but we didn't find anything that's yeah. long since gone. Well is anything down here 
anymore? Come on and tell us. Is, is there anything down here? To our knowledge, there's nothing here at this point. Everything has been abandoned and vacated. And so the only thing we're doing now, again, is attempting to keep it from flooding by keeping the pumps operating. Because we're not going to walk all the way to the end. Louie, I'm going to turn my light on it down there. But basically, the tunnel went a lot further, but it's been blocked off because of what? Well, I believe that's one of the bank buildings that's downtown here. Uh, I think it was back in around 1965 or 66 they penetrated the tunnel, and uh, I believe that's part of their foundation system now that blocks the tunnel. So the idea is that the original tunnel has been chopped up now because when the big skyscrapers were built, their foundations went at least this far That's down. Correct. That's correct. And now the tunnel, like you say, has been uh, sliced up and is no longer continuous. Well, what's, wh what's happening in the sections of the tunnel that have been blocked off forever? Well, right now they are using them for some movie shoots occasionally, and uh, they film various episodes and different things going on. How do you get down there to them? Uh, from the way we came into this end and the other end, it's open at uh, Glendale Boulevard. No, but I mean the parts of the tunnel in between those there two parts. parts. There is no parts in between. It's just, blocked. just one, one section is blocked off. Uh huh. It's about midway through the tunnel. Now, didn't we have a debate earlier on about how long this tunnel is? Well, there was discussion. I, I don't know what the exact figures are, but uh, it's somewhere in the range of between a mile and a mile and a half. That's right. It's in that range. Yeah, that's probably true. The actual tunnel, I believe, is probably close to a mile, but they probably have measured it clear to Glendale Boulevard, too, as far as this part of the right-of-way. Now, let's walk back this way. Boy, we are sweating, aren't we? It is really humid down here. Watch your step here, Louie. This, there's a big pipe here. How long did it take them to build this tunnel? Uh, this tunnel and the building itself took approximately uh, 15 to 17 months to build between uh, May of 24 and November of 1925. So they made good progress building the tunnel. Made very excellent progress, and the entire project came to a sum total of $5 million for the building really? and tunnel. Yeah. Boy, our <laughs> metro line people would like to hear that these wouldn't days, they? wouldn't they? <laughs> Is the thing sturdy? Is it built? Yes. Is it built well? Well, it's been through how many earthquakes, and you notice that it's pretty well intact at this time. Yeah, let's put the light back on again and look up here, because, yeah, it's, it's all poured in place, reinforced concrete, and it'll probably be there as long as any of us will be around. It's, uh, it's very, very sturdy. It's built to last indefinitely. And you know what, just standing here like this, it's so eerie mm. because like you say, it wasn't that long ago That's true. And the that this place <laughs> was hustle bustle. That's true, you can almost, like Bill says, you can almost hear their voices, the people bustling through here on their way to and from. Uh, the echo, you know, is sort of still there. How many people would you estimate came through this time? Well, in the peak of the wartime in World War II, 1943, 61 million people went through this terminal. 61 million, million people went through this terminal. In how long a period of time? That was in one year, 1940. In one year? One year, 40, 1943. And there's even more after that because they ran over 780 trains a day went right through this throat. In the 40s? In the 40s, during the war. And then in 44, when it was harder to drive your own car, it went up to 880 trains a day and went right through this portion where we're standing. Wow. So it was an amazing amount of transportation took place in this, in this particular building. So there are a lot of people watching this program tonight with memories of having oh, come yes. through here. Absolutely. Did you ever come through here? Yes, I did. I wrote it as a child, and it was fun. I was fascinated with it. Did you feel like you were in a subway or just a long tunnel? Or no, what? it felt like a subway because my grandmother says, we're going to go ride the subway today. And this is it. Had you ever ridden it? Yes, I did. And what was it like? It was an experience. Uh, I had never been in the subway before, and this was, it was quite an experience when I was a young child. Mm -hmm. So anybody over 40, 50 years of age would remember this very well. I would think anybody 50 or older that lived in L.A. had an opportunity probably did ride the subway. Yeah, That's right. which means you didn't ride it. That I didn't. <laughs> Well, do you wish you had? I wish I had. It would be an interesting contrast to see what was available in the 20s and 30s and uh, 
compare it to what we have today. And actually, I believe that's just on the other side of this wall that they've blocked off is the new red line that runs up uh, the street. So yeah, the they, new red line is right up next to where the old tunnel used correct. to be. That's right. I'd have to look at the dimension to see how far it's away, but that's close. Right. Wow. So these guys back in the 20s knew what they were doing as oh, far as placement was concerned. Oh, absolutely. Right to the heart of town because it was a, they could get <coughs> split the traffic between the two Pacific Electric stations, one on the east side of town and this one on the west side of town. And, of course, with the entrance with the subway here, it, no traffic problems at all. Wow. We didn't really look up here, Louie. Let's get a light up here. This, this was, was this the... The switching? Uh, yes, it was. That's, in fact, I actually have some still pictures of the tower operator up there operating the tracks in here just to switch the trains. So this is where all the decisions were made down here. Look at the other end down there, down where the decisions were made as to where, where, which, which train went on which track because the two tracks branched into five tracks. I got gotcha. you. And then right here, at the end, okay, this is the, well, there's not much in there. An old drawer, broken lights. That's about it. Any thoughts as we're finishing up our trip down here? I think it would be nice to come back for a day because I think it would be such a stark contrast to what we have today as far as our transportation systems go. Uh, we have to remember that at one time we didn't have the freeways and that this was the viable alternative for getting into the city, uh, avoiding traffic. And that's particularly why it went underground right here near the, uh, the heart of the city. So they went underground to avoid traffic. traffic. That's correct, because downtown was horrendously congested. Uh -huh. It always has been, and that's why this was the main reason this was built, was to avoid congestion of the uh, trains on the streets. And it was just a mess, and that's why they brought all of the lines of the west side into this area. Well, what goes around comes around. We're back to that same point in our city right now, aren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. With the red line going in place, it's now again to alleviate the traffic. Wow. Do you have many people wanting to come down and down here? Oh, yes. A lot of people want to come in and see this, you know, what is left of the tunnels. So they remember it. Oh, yes. A lot, a lot of people of, remember it. A lot of old people, they always say, oh, I remember when I was a kid, I rode these cars, you know. Well, come on, old people. Let's go and finish our... <laughs> Is there any more to see? Uh, I don't know if you want to go in next... I mean, on the other side of the wall. Well, sure, let's see. Let's finish up on the other side of the wall because this wall has been built here and kind of blocked off, uh, I guess, the size of what this place used to be all about. Okay, here we are on the other side of the door. Now, look. It's all gone. The old waiting, the old station and waiting area for the trains is gone. So all this was probably used by the VA as one of their classrooms or something when they were here. Uh, yes, it was one of the classrooms over here. Wow. Well, I hate to tell you, but I like it better in there than I do out <laughs> here. I think we made a mistake ending our program right here. But actually, this just goes to prove how close we are to history all the time and many times don't know it. It's just on the other side of the door. That's right. And uh, also, as long as we're waxing eloquent here, that uh, the old train line, the old subway that was laid down back in the 20s right. is coming back just a few yards from here with the new metro line. So history does repeat itself. Goes around, comes around. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hill. You Here are the two guys who explored this on their own and uncovered a little bit of history on their own. Here's the guy from General Services. You're still kind of the watchdog of this thing, aren't you? We're trying to keep it dry. Keep it safe. <laughs> keep it dry. It's a very important part of our history. Thanks for giving us the tour. Uh, you're welcome. Anytime. And we're going to put your home number on the phone on the screen right now so that anyone else who wants a tour can call you, right? Uh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, Hill. It's been a pleasure working with you. That's been our report from Los Angeles's first subway back in the 1920s, and it's still here. Okay, you know how we can never seem to end a program. Yeah. <laughs> we just said goodbye to everybody, 
and yet you reminded us that there was still one other place to come. Where are we right now? We are outside. This is the exit of the subway. This is where the trains came to the surface and went out to all of the various lines that I described before. And you've got some pictures of that, some footage. Well, actual motion pictures of the trains going in and out of this tunnel. And this, we're standing in the middle of what used to be a, swim, a yard to store all the cars that were used on all these various lines. Now, where are we? What's the exact address? You'd know that well, better. This is Glendale, and this is 2nd Street and 1st intersect right up here, as you can mm -hmm. see. So we're approximately at Glendale and 1st or 2nd. So this would be known as the Glendale Tunnel. Well, that's one of the lines of cities that was served by, this, by the exit of the subway, but there was actually four lines serviced by this, the subway terminal. And there's the old, what is that? That's the substation, the power provided the overhead power for the overhead trolley wires at 600 volts DC. And you'll see in the footage of my, the cars riding right through, going under this bridge and on up this avenue right here. Wow. Well, this is neat, too. This is sort of the out, outward end of the line here from where we were before, and I think that's a, kind of a nice tie together for it. So where we were for the program was exactly a mile down that opening. That's correct. At the other end of that opening, we were there a little while ago. And in between here and there, you can see all the new buildings that have been built, and that's what's intersected the original tunnel so it doesn't go straight through anymore. That's correct. One of the major high-rises penetrates the tunnel and blocks it so you have access from either end only. Well, the graffiti artist have found a new home, haven't That's they? Right, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how what this is all pretty, about. Pretty here. colorful, I think. Though. Yeah. That's for sure. But okay. again, it's a part of our history. This is the other end of the, of the tunnel. For the subway. The other end of LA's first, first subway. subway. Was it really as glamorous as we hear it was, or has this whole thing been exaggerated over the years? Well, I think we didn't realize how great it was when we had it. And now that we can look back on it, we can see that maybe there was a lot of vision when it went into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's quite a little bit of nostalgia now. Well, isn't that the way it always is, though? You don't know what you have till you don't have it anymore. I believe you're correct. <laughs> Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.